Hello and welcome to a quick overview of Penrose 0.2. Um, so um, there are a couple of functionality changes here compared to uh, 0 0.1, which was kind of the series of stuff I started back in uh, the summer and have been kind of off and on working on um, through the back half of last year. Um, but uh, 0 0.2 offers a couple of uh, important changes and very importantly, breaking API changes. Um, they are relatively minor for fixing in your config, um, but they will give you a lot more flexibility and allow me to test a hell of a lot more stuff. Uh, so that's kind of one of the big uh, things at 0.2 is way more tests. And with that, very importantly, uh, way more documentation. Um, so if you go to um, DocsRS, you'll see there's now proper documentation for Penrose, including a kind of getting started guide, some worked examples, uh, kind of uh, overview of how you probably want to go and explore the API. Um, there is a fair amount of stuff if you really want to get digging. Um, if you just want to use it out the box, and then um, as before with 0 0.1, uh, all the examples in the example directory should be enough to get you going. And I'll show you in a second. I've got a couple of kind of uh, short articles that I've written on how to sort of really get going from started. If you've never used Rust before, you've never uh, written a crate or or sort of run your own window manager, it's like a sort of, uh, quick kind of crash course you can have a look at. Um, but if you do know what you're up to with Rust, you are interested in digging deeper. Um, you can now have a look at the various different things. Um, the most important one, which you'll want to start with, is Window Manager. And uh, good God, this took a while. Uh, but uh, these are all the public methods on the Window Manager. There's a lot. And now, bar the ones which are fairly obvious, like make this window visible, which I can't really kind of give a code example for, uh, they should all have examples. Um, so you should be able to see kind of example usage of each of these methods, a bit of a description on what each of these things do. Um, it should make it a little bit easier. Um, so that's if you're just getting started. If you want to dig a bit deeper, uh, the first thing you're probably going to have a look at are things like hooks and custom layouts. Uh, the hook system has changed ever so slightly. Um, partly that's due to one thing I mentioned in the moment with the window manager. Um, but uh, this is now a kind of example of how to make a hook, how to register it, and how to run it as part of your window manager. Uh, this one is super dumb. Uh, it just logs if clients have been seen, but it should give you an idea of the API and how this kind of stuff works. And then you can kind of get cracking with uh, something a bit more useful. Um, but yeah, uh, so like I said, uh, it's been a big change to the window manager, um, which is kind of important. Uh, the window manager is now generic over the X connection that it takes. So if you have an existing Penrose config, um, you are going to have to add some types in places or at least um, do uh, type a lesion, a lesion, I never know how to pronounce that, uh, just the underscore in here. Um, because it's going to hit you in a couple of places, um, I have written up a little guide here. I'll put a link in the description below of the main changes. If you are if you have an existing Penrose config and you're going from 0 0.1 to 0 0.2, um, big one is this. Uh, the window manager is now generic over the XCOM, like I was just saying. Um, so that has an impact on hooks, which take a window manager as uh, a parameter in uh, the methods they've got. It uh, also has an impact on uh, widgets if you're doing any stuff like the status bar up here. Um, this kind of goes into some more detail of what's going on. Uh, and if you read the documentation, um, it explains everything about how you need to get this stuff set up. Um, and um, that's going to be the main one, to be honest, if, you, if you're migrating your config across. Um, if you've written any kind of custom key bindings or um, kind of actions that interact with the window manager, you'll notice now that most things in the window manager public API now return results. Um, this is because there's loads of things that can go wrong. Funny enough, if you're interacting with the X server, uh, stuff just might not work, or you might have um, messed up an ID somewhere when you're trying to talk to Windows and all that kind of stuff. So uh, everything's now honest about where it can fail. So there's loads of results, loads of errors. Um, I'm not using this error, which is fantastic. Um, and there's like a top level error type, which kind of can tell you the kinds of things that can go wrong. So uh, you should get some more kind of rich information if you are hitting any bugs. And um, very importantly, all your key bindings now actually need to do that kind of error handling. Um, there's one kind of extra important thing, which is you can now register an error handler as well. So the default one is just to log out, but if you want to do custom error handling, you can do that as well. Um, and so other than that, other than the window manager being generic, which is the big one, if I'm honest, uh, errors and results everywhere, which is kind of um, easier for you to kind of interact with in your code, but you'll now have to be uh, paying attention to errors. Uh, last kind of one, which is a little bit simpler, is uh, config is now immutable by default. Um, I was just realizing when I was testing everything that there's a couple of places where you could have 
mutated your config while you were still setting things up and then kicked off your window manager in a slightly weird state. Um, so there's now a builder pattern, kind of fairly standard kind of idea. Um, so you get a config, you make a builder, and then you can sort of build up your config from there um, and kind of set all the individual things that you would have been setting before. That's all fine. Uh, but when you call this build method, um, it will actually validate your config for you. So it will check that what you are about to initialize the window manager with is same, and it will uh, return an error if not. So you can use that for kind of quickly checking that your config is all set up correctly, which is kind of cool. Um, so yeah, lots of kind of quality of life stuff. Um, like I said, there's this guide here, which I'll uh, link to that's just on my personal site. Oops, ah, that's uh, the local version of my personal site. Um, I want this, this one. Do, do, do. Oh, no, that's not right. Uh, .io is the one I want. There we go. Uh, so if we go to Penrose. And yeah, there's a getting started guide as well. I'll link to that. Uh, just about a lot of people asking if Penrose, uh, how do I install Penrose? Uh, short answer, uh, you don't. It's not a binary, it's a library. Um, so uh, just to kind of help people out, um, there's a kind of guide here on installing Rust, getting the crate set up, adding your dependencies, a very simple main RS, uh, and how to compile and run and set that up um, using StarTex. Uh, so super, super simple, super bare bones, but it should get you going. Um, so yeah, um, have a look. It's on crates. 0 0.2.0 is there. It's live. Uh, I'm going to be making some more kind of videos kind of explaining um, some kind of worked examples of these kind of things I was mentioning earlier. So like making stuff with um, hooks, for example. I'll do an example of how to make a hook. I'll do an example of doing some custom widgets, um, adding some extensions, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, go have a look, have a play. Uh, let me know what you think. And um, yeah, happy window managing, I suppose.